you do for America. You know that. Remember how Trump made fun of your wife, and then you go become best friends with Trump. I know, but why do you do that? You go become best friends with Trump after he makes fun of you and your wife. Why do you do that? I understand you don't want to defend Texas. You don't want. No, see, I do love America. See, you don't. You care more about the border between Ukraine and Russia than you care about the border between Texas and Mexico. Why is that? Why do you care about that? I know, but why are you a globalist? You're a globalist, bud. You know it, Ted. Hey, Teddy, you're a globalist. You're, you're a globalist, Ted. You know that, bud. And that's why you're a coward and a liar. And you know that, and I know that. And that's why you're afraid to stand up for it. When people were freezing and dying, you were in Cancun, Mexico. You remember that? You remember when you were at the all-inclusive buffet when people were freezing? No, 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 but do you remember that, Ted, when everybody was freezing? Yeah, remember that, when people were dying? That was Senator Ted Cruz being called out by a member of his own party at the Texas GOP convention. Now, a lot of that was accurate. I mean, calling him out for leaving when Texas was literally freezing is something that is uh, necessary to bring up every time you see Ted Cruz. But other elements there were bad. For example, using the term globalist is an anti-Semitic dog whistle. So this is an individual, presumably, who is to the right of Ted Cruz. But you have to acknowledge that some of the things, some of the... Um, the accusations that he's bringing up are just straight up factual. For example, when it comes to Ted Cruz being a coward and cucking to Donald Trump, let me remind you who Ted Cruz is. But you mess with my wife, you mess with my kids, that'll do it every time. Donald, you're a sniveling coward and leave Heidi the hell alone. So will you support him as the nominee? I'm going to beat him for the nominee. That's not answering the question, not, Senator. I am answering the question. Donald Trump will not be nominee. He's leading right now. You Donald just looked in that Trump camera and said he is a coward. Will you support him as the nominee? Donald Trump will not be the nominee. Beta! Beta! Yeah, that's Ted Cruz. That's Ted Cruz. Love it. Love it. So now the reason why so many MAGA Republicans are turning on individuals within the Republican Party who they perceive to be establishment is because for decades now, the GOP has been cultivating a very far right base by pandering to extremists. And Texas in particular is especially bad. And at this convention, they adopted an explicitly fascistic anti-LGBTQ platform calling homosexuality abnormal. They also approved an anti-democratic measure calling Biden an illegitimately elected president. And even if they're not explicitly calling for violence in their platform, when you adopt an anti-democratic platform and claim that the president of the United States was illegitimately elected, what do you think that primes people to believe. It gets them to think that, well, if we can't actually make our voices heard and affect political change through democratic means, we have to do violence. And Charlie Kirk just last week claimed that the GOP wasn't going to give power back once they take it. And this is an individual who claimed that the election was stolen. So when you say that democracy is dead, the election was stolen, is it really that big of a surprise when people show up to your events, your fans show up to your events and say, well, if the election was stolen, when are we going to start using the guns and start killing these people literally? I mean, this is what happened with Charlie Kirk, but he hasn't toned down the rhetoric, even if he knows this is leading people to at least implicitly accept that violence should be the norm. Now, Ted Cruz, what he saw there was not as bad as what Ted Dan Crenshaw got, because Dan Crenshaw was also heckled, but something very ominous happened at the end, and one of the people who was going after Dan Crenshaw said something sh that should worry everyone in the GOP, and really not just the GOP, but worry everyone more broadly speaking, because the rhetoric is escalating very quickly. It's five dollars here, and you're giving Ukraine all this money and red flag laws too, Dan. That's ridiculous. Hey, Dan, why are you on the World Economic Forum, Young Global Leaders? World Economic Forum, Young Global Leader. Dan, what's Klaus Schwab's number? You got Klaus Schwab's number? Klaus Schwab's number, Dan. Hey, Dan, World Economic Forum, Young Global Leader. Hey, Dan, Dan, how are they? Dan, what's better, Aspen or Davos? Hey, Dan, Dan, how's Davos? Nice mountains there, Dan? You like Klaus Schwab? Hey, is Klaus Schwab your grandpa, Dan? Do you have Thanksgiving dinner at his house, Dan? Hey, Dan, does Santa Claus give you presents on Christmas, Dan? What are you doing? Charles Barkley, move. I'm trying to buck. Dan, Klaus Schwab is literally your daddy. Sir? Huh. Take it easy. Dude, he just sold us out. Why are you defending this guy? You have a right to voice your opinion, but not to beat me. 
beat people. I didn't push nobody. That was another tall guy named Alex. Guys, look up the World Economic Forum. Dan Crenshaw is a sellout. Just because he has R by his name does not make him a good person. We vote against Dan. Wake up. Dan is a fraud. Dan is a fraud. Dan Crenshaw is a World Economic Forum sellout. Dan Crenshaw is a World Economic Forum Young Global Leader. Huh? I don't care if I'm pissing you off. You are. You're the reason we're in this situation, ma'am. Dan Crenshaw is a fraud. <laughs> Dan Crenshaw sold all of you out, and you guys are still voting for him. So look, there's nothing wrong with calling out the corruption of your own party. I mean, members of the left within the Democratic Party call out corporate Democrats all the time. But here you see how quickly the rhetoric escalates to where calling out Dan Crenshaw comes with the threat of we should hang him for being corrupt. And this is going to only get worse because members of the GOP are getting increasingly uh, violent in their rhetoric. For example, U.S. Senate candidate Eric Gradens put out this ad this morning calling for rhino hunting. And uh, take a look, because he's not very subtle in his call for violence against members of his own party. I'm Eric Gradens, Navy SEAL, and today we're going rhino hunting. The rhino feeds on corruption and is marked by the stripes of cowardice. Join the MAGA crew, get a rhino hunting permit. There's no bagging limit, no tagging limit, and it doesn't expire until we save our country. So after pandering to extremists for decades, it's all culminated in this. They're no longer just happy and satisfied with this rhetoric that's anti-immigrant and homophobic. They want violence now their thirst for violence is insatiable and now they're turning on members of the gop who aren't going to explicitly suggest that violence is necessary and they're going to go out of their way to target republicans who aren't letting them do violence because again if you claim that the election was stolen and you no longer can affect change politically through the democratic process then the logical conclusion is violence is necessary now and there they are in that ad, hunting for rhinos, as you saw it. And this is the GOP's doing. Now, understand that like they're claiming to care about corruption here, but yet they don't care specifically about how Trump drains his base of resources, personally profited off of the presidency. But the reason why Trump gets a pass for his corruption is because he will explicitly suggest that violence is necessary and either not condemn violence when it happens or encourage it to happen. He's the individual who incited the January. 6th insurrection so that's why they give trump a pass because trump is going to allow them to do what they've been wanting to do for quite some time now now eric swalwell had the right take on this he says let's place the blame for this violent ad where it belongs at the doorsteps of kevin mccarthy and mitch mcconnell they failed to confront and condemn the MAGA radicals of their party now it's out of control and threatens everyone's freedom and i have a lot of disagreements with eric swalwell but he's correct here and it's necessary for democrats to call that out Right. Because Kevin McCarthy, we now know that internally he was freaking out on January 6th, but yet publicly he is a Trump supporter. Same thing with Ted Cruz. Same exact thing. So what we're seeing currently is the GOP's base become increasingly fascistic while the GOP itself, the establishment wing of the Republican Party, wants to remain proto-fascist. They want to continue using bigoted rhetoric against immigrants and LGBTQ plus people, but for so long, the base has yearned for violence to where that's just no longer acceptable. They want to actually take violent action against minority people. So when individuals like Ted Cruz and Dave Rubin and Candace Owens foster hatred against minorities like trans people, they don't understand that they are riling up extremists 
costs that will inevitably come for them. When Ted Cruz panders to Trump's base rather than unequivocally condemning them, well, they end up coming against him. So we're seeing the GOP's base increasingly get frustrated. They don't want to just not do violence anymore. They're becoming very, very extreme, right? And the GOP has, has fostered this for a very long time now. And this is what's happening. This is now the result of them lying in the bed that they've made. But as Swalwell pointed out, this is on Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell. You know, it doesn't just impact them. It now threatens democracy because the GOP's base is explicitly fascistic. Most of them are. And you have most of the party either being taken over by MAGA chud fascists or pandering to them like Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell do. Now, that's not to say that Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy aren't fascist themselves, but the difference is that they're proto-fascist right they break democracy and destroy democratic institutions in a non-violent way whereas the maga portion of the gop base they actually want violence they want to use the guns that they've been accumulating for years and increasingly they can't contain themselves and they have to explicitly call for violence against members of their own party that won't let them do violence or won't endorse violence so you know on one hand it's satisfying to watch individuals like dan crenshaw and ted cruz who have pandered to maga chuds have to deal with you know what they've created have them battle the monster that they themselves have uh, designed their own little Frankenstein, so to speak. But at the same time, it is a worrying sign and you can't just laugh it off because the increasing radicalization and extremism of the GOP's base genuinely poses a threat to democracy. And if it's not contained, then democracy can't survive under these circumstances with this level of extremism. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.